Welcome and good evening. I'm really glad you're with me. Tonight we are going to do our Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology Intro to Iridology and we are going to talk about stomach markers. So to accomplish that we're going to have to talk a bit about stomach physiology and then talk about the stomach markers and then what questions would you ask your client and what are some of the recommendations you would make. So we're going to cover a lot of ground tonight and I'm going to do my best to keep this on time. We went over by a little bit in the morning once, so I'm going to try to maybe just cut out some of the chit chat. Actually, I solved one problem and that will save us about three or four minutes, so that should be good. I am glad you are with me. Thank you for coming. I know your time is valuable and I'm just so excited that you've prioritized this to be with me tonight. I promise to make this time well invested on your part. I've scheduled 90 minutes for this session. I hope you have too. It's going to be a very full 90 minutes. So get pen and paper, be ready to take notes, and we're going to, to really play hard and fast here. And I do encourage you to play all in. We're going to do some polls and some questions and have a bit of interaction. You'll get more out of this if you play with me in the sandbox. So I hope you're uh, all primed and ready to just get in and get involved. Regardless of whether you are a nutritionist, a herbalist, a naturopath, an aromatherapist, a body energy person, a body worker, anything like that, if you have a modality in the holistic health field, chances are iridology is a tool you need. And it's something that you can probably really benefit from using. You will leave today's session with information you can actually use with your clients, the very next clients you have. If you've got some really basic equipment, we'll talk about what equipment you need. Uh, if you've got that, you'll be able to start doing this, using this with your very next client. Now, we are a tiny group tonight. I think there will be a few more people joining us, but depending on where you are, it might still be supper hour, and people might just be finishing up and be a few minutes late arriving, but we need to get going. I do want to do a little poll right off the bat. It would help if I didn't hit the wrong button. There we go. And um, I just need to know what kind of training you already have in holistic wellness. If I know what you've got behind you, it helps me to tailor make this presentation a little bit. So do you have nutrition? Are you a herbalist? Are you a homeopath or a naturopath? And I know they're different. I just, there's only so many spaces I can put on these things. Um, body work energy, not much of anything just uh, yet, just starting out. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Really appreciate you weighing in on that. So we've got nutrition, herbs, and body work and energy work represented tonight. Fabulous. We will tie all kinds of that in with us then. And I just need to make sure the screens are going to change properly. There we go. If you've been following me for a while, you might know this already. If you're brand new to me, then this is an invitation. I encourage you to hop on over to YouTube, take just a really quick minute and go there right now and follow me on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. About once a week or once every 10 days, I put out a new iridology video. And as if you're here, you've probably attended some of my things before and you know that I don't do a lot of fluff. It's not, I'm not going to put up, you know, the funny cat videos or the really sadistic videos of someone getting hurt and everybody laughing. I just, those drive me crazy. I just do not like those. Everything is going to be primarily iridology and that's what it's been for quite a while and may introduce, may incorporate some other holistic healing, natural healing kinds of things as well. So if you want to be up on what the latest video is, then please hop on over to YouTube, search or search up Judith Cobb on YouTube. You'll know it's me if it's got all the iridology videos and get in there and subscribe. And then when you're watching the videos, comment on them, like them, ask a question, get involved. I love to have conversation and interaction and I welcome that from you. All right. So as we get rolling tonight, there's a couple of reasons why I really feel strongly about iridology, especially for holistic practitioners. And I, I want to address this from the perspective of challenges that you might be facing in your practice. Now, maybe you don't have these, maybe everything is all good, but maybe as you hear them, you're going to go, oh, yeah, she's right. So let's see where you fit. 
One of the challenges that I found a lot of holistic practitioners have is they don't know where to start in their recommendations and how to set therapeutic priorities or therapeutic sequences, as I sometimes call them. And so what this means is that um, you, you know a lot of great stuff, but you probably weren't taught how to organize it really well and how to organize it in a way that would work well for your clients. And so this is a really important point because it's going to lead to some other challenges that you might be facing. You know, many years ago, when I first started teaching online, I was teaching iridology and I taught a bunch of classes and this naturopath from New York, lovely lady, was attending a lot of my stuff and took some of my paid classes and that was really cool. And then I was going to start teaching iridology and as I was doing some intro webinars about that, she confided in me that she had been certified several years prior by one of the leading names in the US and that she'd even bought an iridology camera but it was sat stuck in the corner of her office. She'd never even opened it. It was still in the original pack and it was years collecting dust over there. And she said the reason she'd never ever um, done anything with it is because she didn't understand how to use it in her practice. She'd been taught how to do iridology, but she hadn't been taught how to use it. There's a vast difference. So she trusted me and I was grateful for that trust. She trusted me, and came into my classes. We had the first class and that was great. We had the second class and that was great. And after the second class, she sent me an email and she said, I get it. I finally get it. I was like, yay. And then she sent me an email the next morning and she said, I've opened my camera. I set it up. I'm starting to take pictures. I love iridology now. I already know how I'm going to use this. She was so excited because now she knew how to use it. And it was helping her in her naturopathic practice just that quickly to be more effective as a practitioner. The second problem we often face as holistic practitioners is that we, we know a lot of stuff, but we feel like we need to know even more. And we feel like we really want to give our clients a ton of good value. So we see our clients and then we get paid for that hour that we're with them. And then we go off and we spend two or three or four more hours doing research and, research and writing beautiful reports for our clients. And sometimes they come back and get their report and sometimes they don't, you know, that's how it goes. And, um, but we spend all that time writing these reports and we haven't charged our clients for that. And we think that we're giving good value, but I'm gonna tell you we're not. That is not good value. And I'm gonna sh share with you why here. And it's because those reports overwhelm our clients. They get so much information that they, um, they if they come back for that second appointment to get the report, we give them so much, I call it fire hosing. I turn that fire, that water on full pressure and you just blast them with it. But they go and they grab the one or two ideas they think they need and they're, now they're good for the rest of their life. They never need to come back. Or the other thing happens, they look at all of this and they go, whoa, I could never be that perfect. I'm out of here. And that's not serving anybody. The client's not following through. They're not getting results. They're not coming back. Client's needs are not being met and neither are yours. Do I, any of those things sound like things that are happening for you? If they are, would you raise your hand? Just click that little hand icon and let me know if any of those are things that are happening for you. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I know that's a real vulnerable place. That's why I'm not gonna mention any names. I don't want any, if you know somebody else on this call, I don't want them knowing that you're feeling vulnerable there. And so that's an important thing for us to recognize that we have those challenges. And as we recognize that, you need to know, how do I know this? Well, first thing is I've been there. I mean, I've, I've been there myself. You should have seen the pro programs I used to design for my clients when I first started. Oh my goodness, they pay for one hour. They'd still be in my office three hours later. And I'd write these massive reports for them. And then if they came back, if they didn't, that was time spent that was of no value that if they came back and I gave them this huge report then again it was another two or three hours and I only charged them for one I thought I was being really nice but they never came back after that and in those first few years my business really struggled 
and it really was hard to keep the income, to keep believing that this was a good thing, especially since we were having children and raising children and we needed the income. It was really hard to stick in there and do it. No one taught me how to do what I'm going to teach you. What I, what I learned as I worked was I figured this out. I figured this out from enough people telling me, hey, whoa, enough already, can't do that. The other thing is I've interviewed a lot of nutritionists and herbalists and other holistic practitioners, and you know most of them have been there too, because we are not taught how to work with clients when we study. We are taught how to write case studies. And there is a world of difference between those two things. They are not the same. A case study does not prepare you for working with clients at all. So if you are there right now, you are not alone. Lots of people are there with you, but you don't need to stay there anymore. So who am I and what qualifies me to share this information with you? Well, I've been a health coach since 1981. Herbalist since 83 was when I got my first designation as a herbalist. Um, a natural or a nutritional consulting practitioner in 94, an NNCP in 2016. So that's two different professional nutrition organizations. I became a certified iridologist in 93 with the original version of IPA, which back then was Naira. And in 2016, even though I'd been teaching iridology all those years, I decided that it was time to become legit. And I, I did what I needed to with, with the International Iridology Practitioners Association to become a certified comprehensive iridology instructor. I've been teaching wellness professionals since 1985. Now, you know, when I started, there were not a lot of classes way back in the early 80s. And most of what was available was correspondence or you had to travel. Well, I couldn't travel. We had young children and usually I had a breastfeeding baby attached to me. And so I couldn't really travel easily, nor did we have the income for that. So I did a lot of correspondence work. I studied when things came to Calgary, I grabbed the opportunity and studied there. Um, and so that was all great. But as I learned things, as I learned things and as people would come to me, they'd say, I want to know that too. So I started teaching and I gradually started teaching practitioners. As the people developed, they became practitioner material. And so I started teaching practitioners way back in 1985. You know, when you think about 1985, uh, there were not many classes. The world was a very different place. Yeah, I think of, uh, home telephones had cords on them still, right? <laughs> a long time ago, that was before the internet. And of course, my most proud accomplishments, wife of one, mom of seven, grandma of seven. But again, I built this business while having and raising those seven children. Along the way, though, you know, I've spent a lot of money on things that didn't work. Have you spent money on things that didn't work on courses or things that didn't work? Go ahead and raise your hand. I just want to see if I'm the only one who does that. Oh, thank goodness. I'm not the only one. Thank you. Thank you. But I've also spent money on things that did work. And that's the kind of stuff that I want to share with you. And that's what I take great joy in sharing. Would it work for you if I could share with you some of what I know and save you from wasting time and money? If that would work for you, let's have you raise your hand. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, right on. Okay. Well, that's what we're here for today, right? We're going to start that process. And I recognize some of the names that are with me. So I know you've been with me before and you know where we're going with this. Iridology is a beautiful tool, and it is just that. It is a fabulous assessment tool. Just before we talk about how it can help you, I want to know, um, just another little quick poll, I want to know if you have any iridology training under your belt already. Do you? Do you have any yet? Uh, aside from my little free ones that I've been doing, do you actually have training as a Jensenian iridologist? Are you certified in that? Or constitutional, are you certified in that? Okay, so we've got a mix. Great, great. That is good for me to know because as we're learning new markers tonight, I will make sure I explain them really clearly, particularly for those who don't have a background yet. And for those who do, it's a great refresher and you might just gain a new perspective. So I'm really excited to have you with me for that. Iridology can help you to eliminate intake forms. I'm a huge believer that intake forms are a waste of time. You need to have the waiver or release form 
that that permission, that consent form, you have to have that. That is called legal but covering. I hope but's not a bad word where you are. Um, but that's what it is. It's a thick cushion for your behind. If you don't have that, you could end up in serious trouble. And even with it, it offers some protection, but it's not bulletproof. So you need that form that says to your client, I'm not a doctor unless you actually are. I'm a herbalist or I'm a nutritionist. I'm not going to diagnose. I'm not going to prescribe. I'm going to educate. I'm going to share information with you. What you do with it is what you want to do and results you get are up to you. It's not my fault what results you get from using it or not using it and get their permission. You have to have that. But you don't need lengthy intake forms. You just really don't. Iridology will help you start creating a deep rapport from the moment you start the consultation. You know, so many times when we see a medical practitioner, they're busy. Used to be they would look down in the folder, right? They'd come in with your folder and they'd be looking down at it. Now they come in with their laptop and they're busy typing and entering stuff on their laptop. And it's never the I got my eyes on you kind of thing. That eye contact is critical for rapport. With iridology, you're, you're not only looking in their eyes and at their eyes, but you're looking at their face. You're really focusing on the person. So that rapport starts instantly. You know, I've had people tell me on a first appointment, like not even halfway through, my appointments are an hour long. So we're talking like 30 minutes into it. They're saying, I'm telling you things I've never told anybody. But it's because I've got my eyes on them. I'm focusing on them, not on a file, not on a computer, but on them. Iridology is great for that. Iridology will help you to do a core assessment in less than five minutes. That's pretty cool. Like it's going to take you longer to read your 30 page intake form than it will to do a, a basic iris assessment. It's iridology will teach you which questions to ask and it'll help you prioritize what needs to be dealt with first. And it will help you to create your therapeutic priorities list for future consultations. Clients like to know where they are going with you. So they come in and you ask them, how are you? What can I help you with today? And they give you what I call the shopping list, right? So they list those things that they would like your help with. Then you begin looking in their eyes and you start asking questions and you start forming those links, those correlations in your brain of, I saw this in the eye, this was the answer they gave me and that ties into this symptom that they want help with. And as you start creating those links, you make your little list of what you saw in their eyes, what their symptoms are. You then outline a map in your notes of where you want to take them. And you share parts of that with them. So you say, well, today your concerns were this. We looked in your eyes and you've answered these questions and this is the information that you gave me. And so from there with your symptoms and with what we know, we're going to do this. And that we're hoping is going to take us to point B. And when we get to point B is when we'll have the next appointment, because then we are going to want to build a program that's going to take us to point C. And because you are sharing with them the roadmap of where you want to take them, they are much more likely to be compliant and to come back. Yeah, I've, I've had practitioners of various kinds that never had a plan or they never shared a plan with me. And our, our former chiropractor was like, just come see me once a month and I, or every two weeks and I'll adjust you. And meanwhile, you know, every six weeks he's up in the Cayman Islands. Well, guess who paid for that? And I'm just going back and getting my back adjusted over and over again with no instructions on exercise, no instructions on why this is happening, why things are coming out of alignment, what I can do to help myself. Um, I finally fired him as my chiropractor because I had no idea. The only thing I could see the roadmap was that I was going to keep going back and keep paying and he was going to keep having great trips. And that wasn't my wellness program. Okay. My wellness program would be, I get the great trips, right? And so that's really important that we have those priorities that we outline that we can see four or five or six appointments in advance and know where we want to go. It can be modified. It's not cast in stone, but we have an idea of where we want to go and we can share pieces of that with the client. So they're not feeling like they're being taken down the garden path. Iridology will help you eliminate your unpaid homework. Now, if you are currently spending two or three or four hours unpaid working on behalf of your client, and if we could eliminate that, what would you do with that extra time? 
Would that free you up to see more clients? Would it free you up to spend time with family or to have a nap or start an exercise program or volunteer for your favorite charity? What would you do with that extra time? Because that's what I want to help you have here is more time. And with iridology that's well done, you stop overwhelming your clients. And that is absolutely brilliant. You know, I've had so many, so many students over these last years who have already been certified in iridology specifically, but they've not been taught how to integrate it. Just like the first student I told you about. They don't know how to integrate it. They weren't taught that. And I think that's really poor teaching in a lot of ways. Not only will you learn iridology when you're studying with me, but you're going to learn how to integrate it so it can be a useful tool for you. Does that sound too good to be true? If it does, I want you to raise your hand. And if it's just what you were hoping for, you could raise your hand too. All right, that is fabulous, because that's where we're headed. So with iridology, I'm going to teach you how to gather a base of information. We're going to let the eyes teach us what questions to ask, and then we'd have to correlate them with symptoms. We're not going to work with too many symptoms tonight. But that, that iridology assessment actually becomes a rapport building intake exercise. You're not going to waste your client's time filling out pages and pages of intake. One practitioner I interviewed said her intake form was 20 pages long. I'm telling you, if a practitioner handed me that, I'd just go, forget it, I'm out of here. Forget this. I don't have time for 20 pages. I get frustrated with two pages at the dentist's office. It's like, oh, for Pete's sake, just ask me these. It'd be so much faster, right? I had a student who had a, a client come in, and this was a student who had just started my class. She wasn't fully trained yet. But that's okay because she she was working with clients and she had a lot of other training and the client came in and was filling out the intake form that was only three pages which isn't bad but by the end of the first page the client was complaining that her hands were sore she had arthritis and this hurt so that's not cool we should not be inflicting torture on our, our clients that would not be good and so we just really need to be careful with that now another thing we need to watch is if you're in the habit of giving two or three hours when you're only being paid for one, which is actually what this student was doing as well, she would book one hour, but two or three hours later, she'd still be with that client, just like I used to do. It's not good. And I'll tell you why. That client then goes and tells her friend, Jeannie, and says, you know, Jeannie, that, that Judith, she's, she's great. You know, I was with her for three hours, but she only charged me for one. Yeah, it's such a deal. You ought to go see her. What happens then that reputation gets around and everybody now is expecting the three hours for the price of one deal. How do you get out of that? How do you change that? That's a really hard one to break. So we need to be careful that we are not doing that and creating a reputation that's not going to take us where we want to go. In order to do iridology, you do need some equipment. In a perfect world, we'd all have one of these or something similar. This is $5,000 worth of camera. Now, if you have that kind of money in your back pocket, I can actually connect you with this company or there's another company who also does really great iridology equipment and uh, get you set up. But in reality, most of us don't have $5,000 sitting in our back pocket and most of us don't want to spend $5,000 on something that we don't know if we're going to like using it or, you know, if it's going to be something that we're going to fall in love with. So we need to start somewhere else. And these are the somewhere else's. This is a jeweler's loop. They don't make them like this anymore. This one is 40 years old. My husband brought this into our marriage because he did iridology before I even met him, right? So this is a jeweler's loop, 40 years old. It's an 8X power magnification and a really good pen light that shines a really white light. So you need that and you need a lighted magnifier. Now this one was from Amazon and it has three interchangeable lenses, a 3X, I think it's a 3X, a 5X and a 10X. And the 5X and the 10X are really important and if you've got a two or a three, that's great too. These two types of equipment serve different purposes when we're doing iridology. So it's good to have both and it's only gonna be $75. So that's much more approachable, maybe even less, 
much more approachable for most of us, right? 75 after the thought of 5,000, 75 we can manage. So again, you want to try to grab something of both of these if you can. And again, the jeweler's loop probably won't look like this. This is a very old fashioned one. But you know, I figure out for, after 40 years, we've gotten our money's worth out of it, right? It probably turns out to not even a penny a day. All right. So we have another little poll. This, these are just to make sure that you're staying with me, that you're not running off and grabbing a cup of tea. What kind of equipment do you need to do iridology? Do you need a microscope, a telescope, a periscope, or a magnifying device and a pen light? Yay, good job, thank you. Everybody got it right. That always makes me happy when everyone gets it right. Fabulous. So here we are back at the stomach. Now we need to do a little bit of that anatomy physiology thing here because we're talking about stomach markers, but we need to understand how the stomach works. We now know that digestion begins in the brain. Not that the foodstuffs go through there, but we know that the brain has to be ready and it's got to work with the nervous system to tell the stomach and the mouth to produce the right digestive juices and the small intestines too, right? We need all of that. Isn't it interesting that we now know that our gut is actually our second brain and that there's messages going back and forth constantly between the brain and the gut where one is sending messages and the other's receiving it, the other is sending messages and is receiving the answers back. Very exciting. The mouth then, which you know would be up here somewhere as well, is where we chew or masticate the food and we break it down into really, really small particles and we mix it with enzymes. In the mouth, those enzymes are primarily about carbohydrate digestion. From there, we swallow and the food comes down the esophagus. And the esophagus actually goes through the diaphragm and comes down, the food then comes down into the stomach. The esophagus has its peristaltic action, which is that squeezy action that pushes the food down. And we need that to be happening to get it where it belongs. In the stomach, we have a very interesting lining. So this is just a cross section and this is the lumen or the place where the food hits. This is the outside of the stomach wall down here. So inside the stomach, we have what are called gastric pits. And we have these villi or these finger-like projections that help form the gastric pits. The, the top part of the villi secretes mucus. Now, as holistic practitioners, we often think mucus is so bad. Oh, bad. We got to get rid of all the mucus. And that is so wrong. We need mucus in our stomach. If we don't have mucus in our stomach, we get into big, big trouble because this mucus is there to protect the stomach itself from its own digestive juices. Further down on these villo, villi, we have cells that secrete hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is pretty tough stuff in and of itself, but it's not going to do the digesting. Actually, its purpose is to work with the pepsinogen. We've got cells down here that secrete pepsinogen. And what happens is the hydrochloric acid breaks a piece off the pepsinogen because pepsinogen is inactive. And when we break that piece off, we now have pepsin. Pepsin is the active enzyme for digesting protein. Now, if we've got all of this pepsin floating around in the stomach, can you see that we'd have a problem if we didn't have a layer of mucus coating everything? That mucus keeps the pepsin off the stomach and that allows the, the gastric juices to be in there to digest protein. If you don't have that mucus layer, this is what happens. We start eroding that layer of cells that contains the gastric pits. And if that erosion continues far enough, we have what we call an ulcer. And we don't want an ulcer. Ulcers are not fun. So with all of this then, uh, we need to stop and ask ourselves three questions. 
in relation to iridology. Can we see genetic predispositions in the eyes that suggest an increased risk of issues with the stomach lining? The answer is yes, but we only see genetic predispositions. We don't see anything in the eyes that says, oh my goodness, this is happening right now. Iridology is not a diagnostic tool. It is an assessment tool, and there's a world of difference on those. The second question we want to ask is, when we see markings that suggest a less resilient stomach lining, does it mean the person will absolutely have stomach problems? The answer is no, because we need to find out what this person is doing. Maybe this is a person who was raised in a family where everyone has stomach problems, so this person has learned how to take care of themselves. They're diligently, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, avoiding things that would cause problems, so they don't have problems. That's a good thing to do, right? We need to compare this, do an, an, an analogy here, and of course it'll be a car analogy because that's what breaks down the best, right? Every car runs the risk of having its engine seize. So you might buy a car where the consumer reports say this car, really, the engine seizes all the time. Like there's a car of this type made that doesn't have an engine seize. But when you look deeper, you find out that the engine seizes because the owners don't do their maintenance. So you decide you're going to buy one of those cars just anyways. Just take that risk. But you're going to be really diligent about lube jobs and oil changes and changing fan belts and doing all the maintenance that needs to be done. And in doing that, you reduce the risk of the car engine ever seizing. What about if there are no stomach markings? Does that guarantee the person will not have problems with his stomach? So we look at their eye and the stomach area, that digestive area looks really great. Does that mean they will never have a problem? And the answer there again is no, no guarantees. Again, we need to consider the age of the person and what this person is doing. If you buy a car that is guaranteed to never break down, assuming you do your maintenance, but you never do the maintenance, you buy it, you don't do the maintenance, will it break down? Yeah, eventually it will. The same happens in our bodies. We may be driving a Rolls Royce. So really finely put together the best genetic stuff your parents could possibly find. But you're doing what I call the Twinkies and Coca-Cola diet. You're living hard. You're not taking care of yourself. Are you going to break down? Yeah. It might take you a little longer than someone with a weaker constitution, but you will break down. And so when we know that, we need to start looking at these markers and we need to understand questions to ask. The very first marker we're going to look at is called comb teeth. Now with comb teeth, can you see that in this eye, it looks like someone has taken little scissors and snipped in on the eye at the edge of the pupil here? If you can see those little snip marks, let's have you raise your hand. Thank you, excellent, excellent, that's great. Everyone is seeing them. Those snip marks are what create the comb teeth. You can see how this looks like teeth on a comb with the iris tissue coming in. So that looks like your comb teeth. So you know, if this client comes in with no digestive issues that they recognize, then we want to ask questions. We want to ask, do you have any problems with digestion? And we need to be really clear about what we mean by that. A um, little story here, many years ago, I had a client come to me, a woman in her mid-30s, she'd never married, she was still living at home with her parents, kind of taking care of them because they were kind of old, and she was raised in a very protected, very sheltered environment. So as she came in, she was saying things, I'm sorry, that sounds like a storm just went off, doesn't it? Hmm, we'll just let that finish. <laughs> My apologies. And so, um, yeah, takes just a minute here. <laughs> oh, the joys of having a bathroom right upstairs from my office, right? When the toilet flushes, it sounds like we've got a storm going on here. 
Oh my goodness. Hmm. That's life in the fast lane. Okay, there we go. So this client came in and she was complaining of stomach aches. So I'm thinking digestion. I'm asking her all of these digestive questions and I'm looking in her eyes and nothing is making sense. It is so not adding up, total disconnect here. And so I finally said, take a finger and point to where it hurts. And she pointed right down here. And I went, oh, okay. So, hmm. So this is a pain that maybe only happens for a few days every month. Yeah, it is, she said. And I said, does it happen with your cycle? And she said, yes, it does. And she was really almost embarrassed to even talk about it like that. But I had to know, right? And when I understood that it was actually menstrual cramps she was complaining of, not a stomach problem, I could help her. But if I had addressed it as a stomach problem, we'd have gotten nowhere real fast. So always, uh, we always need to break it down. We always need to ascertain exactly what the client is meaning. Here we have it again. So we're going to do the show of hands. Can you see the little snip marks reaching in? If you can see those little snip marks that are creating that edge that looks like a comb teeth edge, the teeth on a comb, thank you then we know we're looking at the right thing. Perfect, thank you so much, appreciate that. Again, I just like to make sure everyone's got it. So we ask about questions with digestion and stomach gas, burping, belching, and bloating, right? Heartburn, reflux. We ask about food sitting heavily in the stomach. So, you know, you might wanna actually be really specific with that and say, well, when you eat, as soon as you eat, how does it feel right in here? Just right up under those ribs. How does that feel right in there? Does it feel good or does it feel like there's a brick sitting in there? And get them to describe what they're feeling because that will help you to understand what's going on. Now, if you've been with me for past webinars, you'll know that these are actually very tiny radial furrows. And you'll also probably remember that radial furrows teach us there's an interruption in the nerve feed. When the radial furrows are confined to this zone that's close in around the pupil, we know there's a disruption in the nerve feed to the stomach. So what kind of information will that give us? And what kind of question do we want to ask? We specifically want to ask what happens to your stomach when you get stressed. When you have a lot of stress, we can see them in here again. They're not quite as long. They're a little bit wider, not quite as long, very sharp. Some of them are very pointy. And so we want to find out when you get stressed, do you stop eating because you know it's not going to feel good? Do you need to change to eat mostly soups or things that have been pureed because that feels better in your stomach? Um, do you eat more when you get anxious? And how does that feel when you do it? So we want to ask lots of questions about how it feels and what their symptoms are. When we've got all of that under our belt, then we want to make some recommendations. Now, so if I've noted we've got comb teeth, I've written that down in their notes, comb teeth. That's not a diagnosis, right? It has no medical value. It's an assessment. Then I'm going to write down beside it any symptoms that they've mentioned, and I'm going to write beside that things that I would consider recommending to them to chew their food well. I'm going to find out, do you chew your food? Limit your fluids with meals to no more than 125 milliliters. Relax at mealtime. Do not eat on the run. Those things are all critical to enhancing digestion. And I'm going to find out, are they drinking fizzy drinks, coffee, green tea, black tea, alcohol? And I might suggest recommending herbs and spices in their food preparation. Now, with all of those recommendations, the, the chewing their food well, the limiting fluid, the not eating on the run, avoiding the fizzy drinks, cutting out coffee, black tea, green tea, alcohol, and including flavorful herbs and spices in their food prep, I'm not going to give them all of those all at once. 
that's too much homework. People will say, give it, give it all to me. I want to hear it all. And I actually refuse to. I'll say, no, I won't. But why? I can do it all. And I'll say, well, you probably can. But I want you to be really, really successful. I'm only going to give you two or three key things to work on and really master those well. And then we'll build on that because I want you to be massively successful in baby steps rather than a huge failure in one step. So important. So, so important. So from those questions that we've asked and from those suggestions, we've already figured out then that there are things that mess up stomach function. Do they chew their food poorly, inadequately? I like to tease my clients and tell them two chomps and a swallow does not mean you've chewed your food well enough. You need to chew your food until it is the texture of cake batter. Chew your food well. Using fluid to wash food down is another way to mess up your stomach function. We've got saliva with enzymes in it for a reason. That is to lubricate our food. So many people these days, and you've probably seen a few of them in your own practice, like to use fluid instead of chewing to lubricate their mouth. So we need to get them to stop that. Remember that all this excess water and fluid dilutes the enzymes in the mouth and it dilutes the enzymes in the stomach and in the small intestine, and it makes them less effective. It's like adding not enough soap to do the job, to clean up the dishes, right? They still end up greasy if you don't have enough soap. You need to have the right amount of water and the right amount of soap in order to get things done. When people eat when they're tense, upset, or too busy to focus, their brain can't tell their gut that it's got a job to do. And so we need to, again, recognize that these are things that mess up stomach function. Carbonated beverages, oh, they're so evil, so evil. I had a client come to us, and this is a great story because this is a fellow that we searched out to do some plumbing for us. And uh, so he was in his early 40s, but we'd known him as a teenager, and he used to babysit for us. So it was really fun to reconnect with him. But as he was doing this plumbing, as we were doing this big renovation, he was here a lot of times because he'd have to do some stuff and then we'd have to do stuff and then he would come back and do stuff and you know how that goes with renos. And on one of those times he was complaining about his stomach and I said, listen, I'll trade you an hour in my office for an hour of plumbing time. And so that was great. So he slipped down to my office and I found out that he typically would drink one to two liters of Coca-Cola every day. And his gut was really bad. The doctor was suggesting that he needed a proton pump inhibitor med. And he really didn't want to do that. But he was already going through a ton of antacids every day just to keep the stomach under control. And so I said, listen, here's the deal. Give up all the carbonated beverages. I couldn't possibly do that. And I said, don't do it forever. Do it for seven days. See how you feel. At the end of seven days, if your stomach feels great, then you decide. If your stomach feels lousy, then keep on doing what you're doing. So he figured he could do it for seven days. And when we saw him about a week later, as he came back to do more plumbing, I said, so? And he said, well, I gave it up completely. And the first day I did, there was a 90% improvement in my gut. And it's easily 100% better now. I don't need the antacids. I don't need the proton pump inhibitor. And... I'm not going to go back to drinking pop. I can live without it now. So that was very cool. Coffee tea and green tea also do nasty things to the stomach lining. They really, really compromise our digestion. Even that one cup a day that everyone says, I only drink one cup a day. Would you leave one little pebble in your shoe? Probably not. Probably not. Alcohol is also known to cause some really serious problems with reflux, so we just want to steer clear of that. Are you beginning to see just a little bit of a glimmer of how knowing some iridology could help you in your practice, where it could help to guide you in recommendations and in questions to ask? If you're seeing just a glimmer, let's have you raise your hand. You won't see the whole picture till you know all the iridology, but if you're seeing a glimmer, yeah, awesome, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so, you know, we can't teach everything in free webinars, right? There's just not enough time to do that. So we do have the next go-around 
have Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology, the big course, coming up. It starts May 31st and it goes till the end of October. It gets taught twice a day, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, or you can choose 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, depending on where you live and what works best with your schedule. Want to encourage you to really give this consideration. Space is limited, and if it fills up, then you might be out of luck and might have to wait till the fall. Registration is at confidentnutritionist.com. Make a note of that. If you want to go there right now, go ahead. But if you just want to make a note of it for now, because we've got lots more stuff to talk about. In the class, here's what you're going to learn. You are going to learn how to create programs right in your sessions and eliminate that unpaid homework time. You will learn how to do a base assessment in five minutes or less, just like I promised at the very beginning, without lengthy intake paperwork. It's going to save you time, and you will do a much better intake assessment. You will learn how to ask only questions that are relevant to your client. No more off-the-wall, helter-skelter, really broad, general questions that you ask everybody. Now you will focus on your client. And as you gather information, you will learn how to prioritize the problems your client needs help with. You'll learn how to connect what you already know about nutrition and or herbology with what you discover using dynamic iridology. You will also learn how to do a deeper assessment for more direction and understanding of your clients when that's needed. And your clients may need that eventually, and it's good for you to know how to get there. So we will teach beginning to intermediate iridology and sclerology at a level that will prepare you for the International Iridology Practitioners Association certification exam if you choose to certify. You don't have to certify, it's there as an option. And in the scope of the course, we will tie in the nutrition and the herbology, just as you've seen me do a little bit already, so that you understand how they work and what recommendations you would make based on what signs and what symptoms. So really, really a comprehensive course and doesn't get into super advanced stuff, but you really don't need super advanced stuff most of the time anyways, and that's for a course for later on. Let's do another little pop quiz here. So in iridology, comb teeth are actually what? Are they the teeth on a comb? Very small radial furrows? Something to style hair with? Or an indication of potential issues with the stomach lining? And you can actually choose two answers on this one. So far, so good. Anyone else want to weigh in on this one? Fabulous. Oh, everyone got it all right. They are very small radial furrows, and it's an indication of potential issues with the stomach lining. Very well done. Awesome. All right. So the next thing we want to talk about is the gray border. Now, you're going to hear this described in a couple of different ways. Some books describe it as the inner pupillary border. Some people describe it as the inner gray border the inner gray pupillary border, any combination, but gray border is the really common part of this. When we are looking at this, we are first off, we're going to see this red ring. You won't see the red ring on everyone on this eye. It's just helping us to see what we want to see. And if we come closer into the iris body itself, you can see there is a bit of a gray zone before it gets much lighter. This gray zone is the gray border. Can you see that gray zone? If you can see this little gray bit that goes around and up here, it actually has some um, comb teeth in it. This is all gray border. I just want to make sure everyone is seeing that clearly so that we can move on with confidence. Okay. All right, and so with this gray border, this actually has to do with how well a person absorbs their nutrients. So the question you want to ask is how well do you absorb nutrients? But if you ask a question like that, what kind of an answer are you going to get? Let me have you type that in. 
What kind of answer do you think your clients would give you if you asked, how well do you absorb nutrients? I'm hoping someone's typing with lightning fingers to give us their thoughts on that. I'll give that just a moment to come in and grab a little sip of water while that's coming in. Larissa, you are so right. They wouldn't know. They would not know what that meant. They'd go, yeah, Susan, excellent. Uh, I don't know. Exactly. Like, how would I know that? Well, so you need to be more, more clever in the questions you ask, right? What questions do you think you would ask to help pinpoint whether they were absorbing nutrients or not? I want to, this is an interesting thing because I've got the list that I came up with, but everybody always comes up with other answers. And so, I'd like to know if you needed to know how well do they absorb nutrients, what other questions might you ask? Energy levels, that's a really good one. That could be quality of nutrient, but it could be nutrient absorption as well. It's one I hadn't thought of. Well done. Anything else? Sometimes you can see poor hair or skin. Yeah, sometimes the quality of their hair or skin could be an issue. Excellent, you're both uh, saying hair as well, so this is good. Hair is often an indicator. Excellent. So here's what I came up with, and I'm not discrediting anything you've said because you've done well. I would ask, how long does it take soft tissue injuries to heal? So if you've got a surgery, a broken bone, or a cut, do they heal quickly, or do they take a little longer than normal? You know, I think of when our kids were little, and one of our kids was such a fast healer, it was such a good mom, I fed them so well, that um, when he fell and got a cut somewhere in his chin or something, isn't that where all boys get, get stitches on their chin or on their forehead? And the doctor said, you need to come back in five days to get the stitches removed. If I'd had the stomach, I would have removed them myself, but that I just can't go there. And by the time we took him in exactly on five days, the doctor went, whoa, we should have taken these out two days ago. He's starting to grow over them. We need to get these out right now, right? And so um, how long does it take for injuries to heal? How's your hemoglobin? A lot of people know whether they're anemic or not. And that anemia teaches us a lot. And I say that because anemia is one of the most complex proteins your body makes. And it requires optimal digestion in the stomach to break the proteins down to get the amino acids to make the protein structure that we call hemoglobin. You also need optimal absorption of iron and B12 in order to actually drop the iron into the hemoglobin. So if they tend to be anemic, there's a good chance they don't absorb nutrients well, they don't digest well, and they don't absorb well. So those are the kinds of directions we want to go. Hair and skin are great suggestions. Energy levels, certainly, as you piece together what their diet is like, you can figure out whether it's an absorption problem, if they're eating really well and they have lousy energy, or whether it's really a food quality problem, they're eating Twinkies and Coca-Cola and can't figure out why their energy is so lousy. So we, those are all really good questions to be considering asking someone when we see this gray border in here. And again, with this image, we can see there's, it's not, it's a little bit different on this one. It's not quite as prominent, but you can see that it's a bit shaded along the edge of the pupil. And on this blow up, you can see again that there's a bit of an edge here where we go from darker to lighter. So we have the darker here and the lighter out here. And we're going to ask those same questions. We'll ask even the, the comb teeth questions because this is still often a stomach issue. Any problems with your digestion, with stomach gas, burping, bel belching, bloating, heartburn, does food sit heavily? How well do you absorb nutrients or how well do you heal? So we, need, we can ask all of those. Now we've looked at really light eyes so far, but we can still see a lot in a darker eye as well. You can see that in a dark eye, we call this eye a hematogenic eye. It doesn't have a gray edge, it has a darker brown edge, and that is the gray border in a dark brown eye. We're going to ask the very same questions. All the stomach ones and how well do you absorb nutrients, how well do you heal up? All of the same questions apply completely here. 
The gray border is something you will, and, and so are the comb teeth, things that you will probably be able to see with handheld equipment. So using your jeweler's loop or an eight, five or a 10X magnification and a good light, you should be able to see this. You can see that gray border really clearly on this blue eye. See how thick that is all the way around? So we're going to then, again, make that list of recommendations. We're going to find out what their lifestyle is. Do they chew their foods well? How much fluid do they drink? When are they consuming that fluid? What kinds of fluids are they drinking? Are they relaxing to eat at, at their meal times? And if they're not doing those things, we're going to put those on our list of things that we could possibly recommend to them. We'll find out, again, beverages, coffee, fizzy drinks, green tea, black tea, alcohol. We'll find out if they're okay with more flavored foods or you know, if they're eating unseasoned pasta all the time kind of thing. And then we can base our recommendations on that and choose things that we know they can do. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to feel like a new person at the end of two weeks because they simply got rid of fizzy drinks. I mean, you might have a, a great example like my plumber friend, but chances are they're going to see some improvement but not be totally brand new. So you may want to just remind them of that, that we're doing baby steps, so we expect incremental improvements. And I just want you to pay attention to where you're feeling better. You probably won't feel 100% better with this start, but we are working towards that. So just be patient and be consistent. So just a little reminder before we get on to the third mark that the registration for Confident Nutritionist is open. And again, it's at this website, confidentnutritionist.com. Stay with me till the very end because we've got lots more iridology to do today. If you are a herbalist, I just want you to remember that because we call it Confident Nutritionist doesn't mean we're going to leave you out. We are going to talk about herbs as well. And we might even throw in some aromatherapy and maybe some flower essences and all kinds of stuff. It's just that to call the course Confident Nutritionist, uh, Herbalist, Naturopath, Aromatherapist would have been too long of a title. So Confident Nutritionist won out as the title. Here is what you get in the course. This is what the course consists of. 20 live webinar sessions, approximately two hours each. So about 40 hours of webinars, just like this one with one huge exception. When we are doing the class, I unmute all of the lines so that we can have conversation back and forth. Every class is recorded in its entirety and posted on the student site. Now, the early class and the late class share the same student site and both class recordings get posted. You know, sometimes I remember a story in the evening class that I didn't think of to tell in the morning class. So, you know, if, when you're in the course, you listen to both and get the information twice, but get different, sometimes different stories and different perspectives. Kind of a way of getting two classes for the price of one. The, um, the content is edited also. Not only do you have the full recording of the class, but each, each individual topic is specifically recorded as its own video and stored on the student site. You have access to that site for 18 months. At the end of 18 months, you are migrated to the alumni site which has all of the content still, so you're not losing access, you're just going to a slightly different site because I don't want to have to maintain a site for every group I've ever taught, right? This way I can roll you into, into it. So, ah, Susan asks a great question. Susan, I promise I will answer that as soon as we get to the next iris picture because that is a brilliant, brilliant question. Oh. Lots of good questions here, Susan. I promise I will answer them as soon as we get to our next iris picture. Uh, you get a digital textbook, so it's uh, available in weekly downloads for you to download. If you want to print it up, that's fine. If you just want to save it on a device, that's fine as well. And that way you don't have to go out and buy another expensive textbook. I've developed what are called cheat sheets where we've taken all of the content, all of the curriculum content, and put it onto charts. And all of that is then put into um, its own document. So by the time we're done, you've got about 70 or 75 pages of content in succinct little charts. So you're not have, having to read a lot of other stuff and flip through photos. If you know what things look like and you're just wanting a reminder of, of what questions would I ask, that's on the cheat sheets. It's a description of the, of the markers. What questions would you ask? 
what symptoms might you see, what recommendations might you want to make, all in a chart form. My students love that. That's probably the thing that they, they value the most when they've graduated. Every class we start with a review of the previous week. And um, we actually start with questions. Do you have any questions? And then we review the previous week. So we make sure everyone's solid and then we cover new content and then we practice the new content. We have lots of time for in-class practice and interaction. We look at a lot of eyes. You get a certificate for attending 80% of the classes live. And you get support via the Facebook group. Now this, this little certificate, uh, yeah, jumping out of myself. The certificate is important. You might have other credentials that require continuing education units. And for many of those, the iridology course would count. And so this certificate says that you've got the CEUs, right? So that's why that's important. We also have a private Facebook group just for my students and alumni. It's a small group yet um, because my classes are small but we have a good group. We have a very compassionate, loving group that loves to share information and loves to support one another. So it's a brilliant group to, to be a part of. And as soon as you are registered in the course, even if the course isn't starting till the end of May, you have access to the Facebook group. We also have a monthly office hours webinar. And this again is open to you as soon as you've registered for the course, even if your class doesn't start till the end of May. What this is, is students submit photos of eyes or written descriptions of eyes that they want us to discuss. We load them up, we look at them, we talk about them, we walk through an analysis, we, what questions to ask, what recommendations, tell us about this client, what are their symptoms, what are their needs, and we basically do an assessment of any eyes that students want to submit. If no students submit anything, we don't have it for that month. Totally student driven. So what's the tuition? Well, if you know right now that you want the training and certification, you want to work towards your IPA certification, the tuition is $19.95 Canadian, which works out to about $14.95 US when it goes through PayPal. That includes the complete course curriculum, exam part one and IPA exam part two. So these are mandated by IPA, but they are administered by me. And so this is a high touch course, a high contact course. This is not a correspondence course. You've got live webinars, you've got uh, Facebook support, you've also got the office hours support. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to get coached and mentored during the program. If you're thinking, I want the information, but I'm not sure about certification, I don't know if I want it, or I'm certified somewhere else, so I don't really think I need another certification, I just want the information, then you would want option two, where the tuition is $14.95 Canadian, it's roughly $11.25 US. This is the course only, so you get the exact same curriculum that the certification people do. It's just that when the curriculum is finished, the certification people get access to another website that has the exam components on it. So you get the exact same stuff, you have the exact same support on Facebook and in the office hours mentoring. You just have decided you don't want the exam to change your mind later on and you go, yeah, I really, I really do want certification. That's okay, because I've got a separate certification package. You can buy that if you've done my course. We can do the certification anytime you want. Now, for those of you who might be in the US, again, you just might not understand that the Canadian dollar is worth a lot less than the American dollar. And so your PayPal, which is how things get paid for this, is going to convert it for you. And you're going to find that it's going to come up closer to these lower numbers. Now, let's just take a look, because you're going to look online. And you're going to find that there are a lot of people that are teaching like a five-day iridology workshop that is IPA level one and level two, and they're charging, you know, $700 for it. And that's great. This course is also IPA level one and level two. I just didn't want to call it that. But here's the big difference. With those other courses, you have to travel to them. So you've got the time off work, five days plus your travel time. You've got your hotel. You've got your airfare. You've got your food. If you've got children, you might have childcare. If you've got a pet, you might have pet care. 
You've got a lot of other expenses before you even get to your tuition. You also have another challenge that is one that I really suffer with when I'm doing a course, and that is if it's a long intensive, like a five day, by the end of day two, my brain is mush and it shuts off and I, I don't learn anything. Those last three days, I might as well just go home. I need time to assimilate it. And so doing a course that is two hours a week, once a week, for 20 weeks, sounds like a long time, but it allows you to learn, to practice, to go, oh, I don't really don't understand this. I think I need more help with this, or I've got this, and really run with it, and then come back to the next class and rinse and repeat. Again, my goal is to teach iridology in a way that you get it and you can use it. Now, we are eight weeks away from start date. That's an awfully long time. And so I have a little incentive for you. If you are ready to commit now and you're ready to pay, then I got a deal for you. Until Thursday night at 8 o'clock Mountain Time, you save $200, so $17.95. Or if you want option two, you're still going to save $150, and that'll be $13.45. So that's for committing now. Get access to the Facebook group right away. Get access to the office hours. We have one coming up on Tuesday the 10th right away. And start hanging out with us. We're a nice group. We need to talk a bit about the IPA exam. If you decide you want to do it, you need to know what it is. And if you're not sure if you want to do it, you need to know what it is so you can decide. The exam is three parts. Parts one and two are included in that first course option. Part one is 10 iris analyses, which I supply to you as digital photos. You do the analyses, and we will never do iridology this way again after you finish this course. Right? This is simply a way to assess if you know it not a way for you to practice it, because remember we said we're not going to write reports anymore, right? So you do the analyses written, send them to me, I mark the work, and then you and I are going to spend about an hour together going over your work and making sure it's really solid. I've had some students who, mm, I did, they weren't as solid as I wanted them to be, so I said I'd like you to do a few more cases, do them up, send them to me, I'll mark them, we'll meet again. And we did that a couple of times till they were really solid. Some people are solid the first time. Great. Whatever it takes. My interest is your success. Once you have done the 10 analyses and I'm feeling, yeah, yeah, got it. Got it really well. Then IPA gives me one analysis for you to do. You do it. Send it to me. I mark it. We spend an hour going over it, making sure you're really solid with it. And when we agree that you are confident that you know what you're doing, then I let IPA know that you are ready for your last part of the exam. That exam has a fee that is payable to IPA. It's a four hour written exam. So you send in your, your request for it, you send in your fees, they, you have to find a proctor. They're actually working on putting it online now. And you do the exam. The exam is seven multiple choice, seven sections that are multiple choice, drawing exams or drawing diagrams, filling in the blanks. And um, you have to get 80% on each section in order to pass. If you miss a section or two, you pay a rewrite fee of $75 to rewrite just the parts that you missed and gradually you'll, you'll get to where you need to be. So that is the exam process. Again, if you want that right up front, that's the package you would buy. And that, that means that we are at the end of, of our coursework, we're gonna start working on your analyses and your case study. If you don't think you want it or you don't want it right away, you want to do the coursework first, you can always buy the, the exam package later on. Let's answer some questions. Susan said, can you yell, use a cell phone for pictures? I'm actually going to show you later on um, some pictures that were done with a cell phone. It is possible. Most cell phones are only a 12 megapixel resolution. This image you're looking at is an 8 megapixel resolution. Most of the images we are seeing are 24 megapixels. So as we go through, actually I'll make a point of pointing out the megapixels for each picture. And you can then, um, when we get to the ones that were done with a cell phone, you can decide whether you think that they are good enough. They, they, you won't see the detail. You'll see some, a lot of stuff, but you won't see the minute detail. So it's a place to start. 
but you don't want to stay there for very long. You want to graduate to other stuff as quickly as you can, other equipment. Susan also asks, can you have a gray border and not have comb teeth? Yes, you can. You can have a gray border that does not have comb teeth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good question, Susan. Both of those really great questions. Thanks for asking. So when we're looking at uh, the stomach ring, what we are looking at is what I sometimes call the pom-pom zone. And that is this band of tissue that starts at the edge of the iris and comes out to here. Can you all see that there is a change here in texture or in color, but there's a definite line of demarcation. There's an edge there. If you can see that, raise your hand. Thank you. And thank you, awesome, fabulous, thank you so much. That's great. I am being a stickler to make sure that you're seeing what you need to see. When we can see this edge right here, what it tells us is that there is less fiber in this zone from the pupil's edge to this fiber here. So there's less dense fiber. And we are actually then able to see through this thinner fiber, these thinner layers of fiber, and see the constrictor muscle that is there to draw the pupil down. Whenever there is less fiber in an area, whether it's in an area like this or an area like this, we know there is less genetic integrity in that area. So seeing this ring tells us that the stomach has a reduced genetic integrity. The color of the ring also gives us information. We just don't have time to get into all of that tonight. And it can range from white to gray to any pigment color you can find in an iris. When we see a stomach ring, we're going to ask those same questions because it is still the stomach zone. We're still talking about digestion. Any problems with digestive issues, stomach gas, burping, belching, bloating, Heartburn, does food sit heavily in the stomach? So we're gonna ask all of those questions when we see this ring. You can see this ring actually changes color. We've got some comb teeth kind of at the edge and it sort of is a bit of one color up there and a bit of a different color down here. Yeah, you can get rainbows too. Here we have another stomach ring. And with this one, Again, can you see that there is a bit of an edge here? You know, you might not notice it if you don't know to look for it, but when you know it's there, you can see that there's a little more pigment in here and less pigment out here. So that is the stomach ring. We need to ask those questions. You even see there's a bit of a gray border in here, right? Ask all of those stomach questions again. And your client may have some clues. They may know they've got symptoms. And you know what? We're going to make the same recommendations all over again. You're going to base it on what you know about your client. If your client is a busy mom who's got two or three kids that are all in different sports and she's go, 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 and food is off and drive through, we need to really coach her on chewing her food and on using her crock pot or her instant pot to make meals that are really healthy and really quick and easy. And we need to get her to maybe not eat until she gets to the hockey rink or until she's at the soccer field sitting on the sideline watching. Then she might be able to have a few minutes before the game starts to eat and focus on digesting. So we want to to consider our clients' lifestyles and consider what suggestions can we make that will make our recommendations doable. It would do no good to tell that busy mom that she needs to cook a four course dinner every night because it's not gonna happen. So we need ideas for them that are very practical and very applicable. And again, to include the flavorful herbs and spices in the food prep and to not do the fizzy drinks and all that kind of stuff. Can you see this stomach ring again in this eye? All the way around. Yeah, so it's, it's right there. Thank you so much, appreciate that. 
you know, and then we need to look at other things like how is this line sitting? We don't have time to go into this. How is this line sitting in relation to the stomach ring? Where is this line pushing into? How is it affecting other organs? There's just so much we can see right there so easily. <clears throat> so how do I, or why would you want to study with me? Well, I've been where you are. I've um, struggled with spending too much time, like I told you about with dealing with clients and more time than I was being paid for and probably scared away more than I care to admit. And it was not good. So I've been there. I understand the financial and time constraints of running a business, taking care of family, home, friends, and other important commitments. Most of our kids are grown and gone. We've got a 19 year old left at home that she'll be leaving this summer. But my parents are aging. My husband's parents are aging. So now that we're empty nesters, we have other commitments to family, right? And so it's hard. It can be really busy. And taking five or six days off to go somewhere and spending all that money all at once is just not going to fly. I understand the learning needs, and we all don't learn the same way. We need different types of uh, learning experiences. There's a lot to learn about iridology and sclerology, and it can be overwhelming. So I've got lots of pieces in place to support your learning. It's less expensive to study with a Canadian teacher who's charging Canadian dollars. I know a lot of Canadian teachers who charge in US dollars. It kind of makes me angry, but oh well. I'm committed personally to your learning. You won't get passed off to an assistant. I visit the Facebook page every day except for Sunday and Monday because that's my weekend. I'm on those, I'm hosting the office hours calls, right? I'm answering questions when we are in class. I'm there to support you. If you're going to do the certification program, I'm going to make sure that I've mentored you appropriately, do it in your 10 cases and your final analysis so that you are ready for the exam. This is one of my students, Michelle Davies. I am so proud of my students. I, I get weepy, so you've got to forgive me. I just, I love my students. There we go. And I love teaching them. So this is what Michelle said. I've studied iridology with David Pesek in 2006. She had levels one, two, and three from him and iridology in professional practice with Dargo Purse. This is the most amazing iridology course I've taken. Judith's course is top on my list. Judith is very enthusiastic as we are in the course. She has many good examples and stories to share that make the course that much more real in today's world. Judith's iridology course is very informative, descriptive, and complete as it contains the most accurate iridology, including sclerology, and the most, and most importantly, how to put it all together and make a proper assessment. I am, I feel most confident in my nutritional practice now. This was written when she'd completed her studies but had not yet graduated. She just recently graduated, and this is what she said. I got to give her her final grades. Woohoo! So amazing to become certified. It was a great journey through Judith's classes and extended webinar tutoring. Her faith and personal care really made the difference and encouraged me to the finish line. But it doesn't end here. I've gained confidence in myself in promoting good health through nutrition, lifestyle, and personal awareness for optimal health. Awesome. Allison Taylor said this. Judith Taylor is, is professional and easy to learn as she stops for questions, has great slides and reviews every week. Her students are her priority and their understanding of the information is imperative to her. There is a student website page with all the PDFs for downloading and videos to watch. The page is easily accessible. There's also a private Facebook page for questions, comments, assessments, and just keeping in touch between weeks. This is a one of a kind course. I would definitely recommend this course to anyone who's even thinking of taking an iridology course. Judith is a wealth of knowledge and a fantastic mentor. I love this course and I know you will too. Allison needed iridology for another certification she was working on and some of the other students chose to do a correspondence course as they would get together for the, the big course that they were all doing together. Um, the other students were amazed at how much Allison knew and how easy it was for her to learn it because they were struggling to learn it through correspondence. Karen Cho, this is my last uh, my last testimonial for tonight. Thank you, Judith. It's been such a pleasure studying. Golly, here we go again. Under you and learning from you. I really miss our classes. I hear that a lot. After 20 weeks, it's become a habit and people want to keep hanging out. But I'm looking forward to completing this component of iridology and continuing my education, most hopefully with you. 
I am putting together advanced courses in a couple of different directions. I have become much more comfortable with taking photos of my patients, patients' eyes, she should have said, and I've begun to implement this incredible work in my practice quite successfully. It has truly has helped me immensely in my decisions and assessments. Thank you for your sharing your skill, your knowledge, and your patience. She just finished certifying a couple weeks ago. I sent her her grades. Thank you, Judith. I am so very happy. Okay. Whew. This is a dream realized. I'm so thankful that I had the best teacher to educate me. Forever grateful, Karen Chowett. She came to me as a certified natural health practitioner. And so she had a lot of training under her belt and she just wanted to add the iridology. And that is um, how she felt about her course. And all of these people still hang out with us on the Facebook page, right? That's what it's there for. It's there to continue that relationship and to continue support and answering questions. I want to do another quick little poll here. Again, see, uh, make sure that you've picked up what we need to do. The gray border often exhibits stomach symptoms of burping, belching, bloating, or good taste in fashion. Which of those and you can have more than one, are symptoms that often accompany a gray border in an eye. Did I not launch that? I did not launch that. You're probably wondering, what the heck is she talking about? Yes, let me get into there again. I can see it on my screen and now you can see it on your screen. Sorry about that. I thinking, these people are way faster than that. Why, is, why are the answers not showing up? Which of these are indications, are symptoms that could accompany, accompany a gray border? Burping, belching, bloating, good taste in fashion. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. And I've got one more about gray border. And launch it really quickly. A gray border correlates to inflammation, reduced ability to absorb nutrients, increased risk of developing shingles, increased appreciation of classical music. And I did share that one, so we're good. Awesome. And awesome, fabulous. I love it when my students get perfect scores on things. That's just fabulous. And I've actually had some students get perfect scores on sections of the exam, which is really exciting. When we look at an eye, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do a five minute assessment. Now, um, Susan, this was an eight megapixel camera. And you can see that it's not quite as crystal clear as some of the other images we've looked at. So if I was seeing this person for the first time, I would assume that I'd, I'd ask them how they are and what they needed my help with. And then I would begin looking and here's what I would do. I would start in this inner zone here and I would note we've got some little uh, comb teeth going on. We've got a bit of gray border happening and some of it's obscured by the light. We've got some different colors in this area as well. And I suspect that um, that there's a bit of a, a stomach ring, although we can't see the edges of it clearly. So I'm thinking digestive. As I, and I'm gonna ask questions about digestion. As I work my way out, I'm noticing we have a lot of these, we call these lacuna. If you've got Jensenian training under your belt, you would call those lesions, but lesions has so, so many negative words, negative connotations. So we've got all of these lacuna in here. And because of where these are sat, I'm going to suspect that there might be some hormonal issues. So I'm going to ask about that. I'm going to ask about thyroid symptoms. I might ask, depending on the age of the client, about reproductive system symptoms. I might ask about blood sugar symptoms. Anything I can think of that might have to do with hormones, adrenal symptoms. And then I would, would pinpoint if any of these are sitting in any specific areas that correlate to any of those symptoms. Then I'm going to notice that we have lots of bright orange in here, which correlates to gallbladder. So I'm gonna talk about gallbladder function. Do they have any problems digesting fats? Do fats make them feel gross and yucky? Do they know if they've got any gallstones? Is there a personal or family history of gallstones? I'm going to notice that we've got pigment 
Um, this pigment tends to be more into the liver hue, so it's telling us that the liver wants to make life interesting for other body parts. So we're going to talk about livery symptoms, which could be skin, could be a metallic taste in the mouth, it could be feeling angry and irritable a lot. And I'm going to decide to any of these sit in an area that is actually liver specific. Then I'm going to notice that we've got this band, this milky film coming around the outer edge. This correlates to liver enzymes being out of balance and an increased risk of building cholesterol and blocking arteries. So depending on the client's age determines how important this is. If this client is 30 or 40, this is massively important. If this client is 75, I don't know when this started. I'll ask about cholesterol, but I'm not going to be so worried about it because it could be a liver enzyme issue or it could be natural aging of the cornea. And we're never here to upset our clients or to raise an issue that might be problematic. And if they say their cholesterol is just fine, that there's been no cardiovascular issues in the family, I'm just not going to worry about it. Then I'm going to notice in the sclera that we have this vessel. And because I know this set of eyes very well, I've looked at them a million times in teaching, this blood vessel actually wraps all the way around down to here. And that tells me that any organ fields here coming all the way around, those organs are, are in the early stages of having congested circulation in them. And so I'm going to ask about that if they've noticed that their energy is a bit lower, that they're maybe a little bit colder, that things are not working quite as well. And then we might work on that. That's a five minute assessment. And I've gathered that all just from looking at the eye and knowing what I know, I can ask questions and create the program for them. So before we do that last eye sign, it is time to get registered, confidentnutritionist.com. Some of you will want a payment plan, and I totally get it. I love payment plans. Payment plans make things doable, right? Because they spread the, the investment out over time. So if you want the full meal deal, four payments of $549. If you want the curriculum only, four payments of $419. And again, it's all processed through here. Your payment plan when you go to Confident Nutritionist is right at the bottom. So scroll down, 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 down. Under the very last set of register me now buttons, you will see a text link that says I would rather make four payments. And you can choose whether it's the full meal deal or curriculum only when you get there. Now we had an early bird discount for the full payment and I like to be fair. And so we have early bird discounts as well for the payment plan. Until Thursday at 8 p.m. my time, that's mountain time, if you choose the full program for payments of $4.99. That means essentially you're not paying a service fee for doing four payments. And if you choose the other program, the course only, four payments of $381.50, again, you are basically paying just the, the curriculum. You're not paying a service fee for doing payments. So some pretty sweet deals there that disappear Thursday night. You want to grab those as quickly as you can. So you might be wondering again when it is, just a refresher, May 31st till the end of October. And we've got the choice of two times. So when you register, um, I'll walk you through the registration process in just a few minutes. Um, but you're going to choose whether you want the early slot or the late slot. I haven't assigned an end date. We have 20 classes. I usually like to take one or two nights off in that, that session. So it might run 22 weeks. Um, sort of like a reading week to give you time to just settle and maybe have a life for a week, right? I can't schedule those right now. We're expecting some major events in our family that will require my full and undivided attention. And so um, particularly one of those, when it happens, I'm going to be booking off two weeks for sure to tend to some important family matters. And so uh, there will be most likely, uh, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if it does, just know that when I get on the Facebook page and say, two weeks off for the class, you'll know that there's been something happened that needs my attention. And um, But you will get your full 20 classes. They will just have a little gap in them. Okay, so, and I know that when that happens, I'll explain it, and you will totally understand. 
So how it works is you go to the website, choose whether you want the full program or the course only for pay or for pay, depending on which one. You pay the tuition. Uh, you check your email for the form. You're going to get an email back, and I know it works because we had people registering this morning, so the forms go through just fine. But if you don't receive the form within an hour, send me an email, and I will personally send it to you. Print the forms up. It's four pages worth. Complete the form. Scan it or take pictures of all four pages. This is your contact information. This is permission for me to be in touch with you. This is all the information you need, all the, the nitty gritty stuff as well. So it's really important that I have that those pages back. That's also where you're gonna tell me which, which you want, the early or the late, and email those to me. Email them to me. As soon as I get them, I work on completing the registration within one business day. You'll have all your confirmations back that you are in like Flint. Okay, getting your registration completed is my top priority. And it takes precedence over most other things except for teaching, teaching other classes and live clients. So you're right up there in the top three and it will be addressed. Now, sometimes when we're looking at eyes, we look and we're thinking, well, can you see anything in a dark brown eye? The, there's things that are hidden that the, the pigment is so thick. What do you see? Let's have a look. We've got gray border in actually both of these eyes. Uh, we can't see clearly the stomach ring, but we have a feel. Can you see that in this eye, there is a textural change? We've got lots of little radial furrows that end right about here. So we actually know where the stomach ring is. It's where all those little radial furrows are. We can see where this fiber is placed, and that teaches us much about the eye. We can see lots of lacuna in this eye, which teaches us much. We've got pigment. We've got contraction furrows. Even in this eye, we've got the gray border. Again, we can see where the edge of that big fiber is that goes around. We've got lots of radial furrows that we can work with. We've got contraction furrows. We've got a, a white murkiness happening at the edge. And then we move into the sclera. We've got lots of blood vessels here. So we can see a lot in a brown eye. And it just takes practice to know what to look at and what to pay attention to. And we also go back to the sclera with our brown eyes because they teach us much as well. So the benefits of, of the course again, and you're seeing these, right? No more unpaid homework time for you. You'll be able to create the therapeutic sequences that will help your clients be more successful and will keep them coming back to continue their wellness journey. They say it's less expensive to find a client, no, no, to keep a client than it is to find a new one. So if you've got clients that are coming into you, you just want to nurture them and you just want to keep them and they will advertise and they will find your new clients for you. You'll be able to eliminate lengthy intake questionnaires. You will be able to develop rapport within minutes, really important, and you'll be more precise in your client work. You'll, and you'll get your stuff done, you'll get your client assessment done the right way the first time. Now, Susan asked a great question earlier, and it was, can you have a gray border that doesn't have uh, comb teeth? And you absolutely can. You can also go the other way and have all three of these signs in one eye. And that's what we've got here. We've got a gray border. We've got sort of that rusty colored border, but inside it, you can see it's a little bit gray, a little bit dull. That's the gray border. We've got comb teeth, because we've got these short radial furrows, and we've got the entire stomach ring showing up. So when we see that, you think we're gonna ask some stomach questions? Yeah, huh? we sure are. They're probably coming in with stomach symptoms, and if they're not, we still want to know what they're doing because they may have been raised in a family like I said earlier where everyone has got problems so they learned early on how to take care of themselves and they prevented problems and when we discover that about a client we can encourage them to maintain that and then we can build on the foundation they have already laid for themselves so once again just that invitation to pop on over to confidentnutritionist.com, 
choose your option, get yourself registered so that you know you've got your spot. I do keep the classes small and when they're filled, they're filled and you go on to a waiting list. And so if you really want your choice of date or of time and of package, that's it. You want to go there. So, um, oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, let's just for Susan, just for quickly here, let's just point out some things on some iPhotos. This is an eight megapixel image. That's an eight megapixel image. Okay, this is a 24 megapixel image. The definition is just incredible. Um, I just actually got a 24 megapixel camera that just over a year ago. I could not believe the difference in what I was seeing with that. Okay, these were taken with a, a smartphone. All right, so when you see that, yeah, we can see stuff but we don't see it with huge clarity. And so it's a starting point, and I would never discourage you from doing that. If that's what you've got to start with, start there. Start there, for Pete's sake, start there. And build, build from there. I would do the photos with this, but I would still have the handheld equipment so I could see things really fairly clearly, and I would work towards saving my money for things. Let me show you the difference I actually have. We're gonna do something I didn't do with my morning group here. We're going to pop into some other slides. This is kind of a little bit of a bonus thing, just because you asked. See these big dark areas? It just looks like there's no fiber there. And you know, it's out of focus because I'm a lousy photographer, but where it is in focus, we can see things fairly well. Eight megapixels. Do you see the difference? Where these areas just looked like they were just gray and shaded because of the, the lower resolution when we pump up the megapixels, we suddenly see that it is what I call splatter pigment. So this is pigment that has probably been accumulated. Now, and it might have been accumulated because this fellow used to have his own business where he drove water truck for the oil rigs. Um, oil rigs don't have their own water supply and they have to truck the water in and his business was trucking water in. So he was exposed to whatever toxic chemicals are used on oil rigs, right? He was exposed to that for many years. He lives in a fairly rural community that has lots of farms around him. He may have also been exposed then to things that are sprayed on farms. At any rate, that gives you then, Susan, a bit of a comparison of a cell phone to an eight megapixel camera that is dedicated to a 24 megapixel camera. And there is quite a significant difference. So you, when you're working with iridology, you, you, when you've practiced and you've decided you love it, you do want to work towards getting better equipment as you can. These cameras are all digital. So with a fire wire, you just connect it. And um, when you show it right from the camera, it's never as good. So I always quickly download and then show it on my computer screen. Always do that. That's how I show my clients their iPhotos is on my computer screen because that way they've got an image that's like 10 inches across, easy to see what we're looking at. And if I feel like I should print something up, I can always take it out to something like Photoshop and just print up a four by six inch print for them. In fact, I understand, although I don't know how to do it, that this camera is capable of wirelessly uploading to my computer. Okay, my kids could do that, I can't. So <laughs> I'm okay with the FireWire, I know how to do that and I don't mess it up. So, so really, you, you would need to do due diligence, but the two people I trust for cameras are John Miles and, um, and his website is Miles Research and Iris Explorer, and that's Matthew Dahmer in France. And I trust them. Their service is brilliant. When I, after I uh, bought this Iris Explorer, I was back and forth with them a lot, fine tuning it and understanding it, right? And that was great. And even with this one from um, from John Miles, I've been back and forth with him for about the past year, deciding on this. I actually just got it last week. Pretty excited about that toy. And uh, even today, back and forth with him saying, okay, I just need a little coaching. How does this work? How does that work? He, he's actually produced a manual that comes with the stuff and it's coil bound. So really thorough. But their after sales service is amazing. 
amazing and that is really important to me. They support me the way I support my students and that's important. If they're not going to support me, I don't want to buy from them. Well, that looks like we've covered everything that I wanted to cover and some things that you wanted to cover as well. I've had a lot of fun. You can tell I love teaching. That's kind of in my blood. But do hop on over to confidentnutritionist.com. Choose your option. Get registered while there's still some good, good availability. I'd hate for you to miss your chance. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for another one of these where we're going to do case studies to do with those stomach markers. Have a good couple of weeks and hopefully we'll see you in the registration deck. Take care. Bye-bye.